chairs. I just want to thank you all for coming out tonight. I know it's chilly outside and zoning is so exciting that this is definitely something you want to come out for. So I do appreciate it because now I have someone to talk to zoning about. Um, I just want to say like this is why I became a planner. Being out with the community, talking about planning, and, and getting people's feedback, engaging with them, trying to help them get engaged in the process. So together, we can build a community that we're all proud of. So I'm super, super excited. I'm going to try to hold my container. I'll let you know now I'm a walker and a talker and a hand and a And so at times, I know I should like, just bring it down. Just bring it down. So I'm going to try to contain my excitement for this evening. So you might see me going back and forth because I don't have someone to, to cook for me. Okay. The executive director is clicking. <laughs> All right. So. What's changing? So it's worth noting, before we, we get too deep into the weeds about zoning, that once this proposed zoning bylaw is adopted, a light switch is not going to get flipped and everything in the city is going to change. So your favorite coffee shop, that restaurant you like to go to on Sunday with your parents, uh, your community centers, uh, places of worship, all of the things that make your life in Regina great are still going to be there the day after the zoning bylaw is adopted. So we don't want people to walk away thinking that there are going to be radical changes after this zoning bylaw is adopted. Uh, the best way we can describe what you can expect as residents with regard to this, this bylaw is that what we're proposing is best understood in the context of the flexibility that we are trying to create for new development. So if you currently have a business, a property with a structure on it, as long as it's, it was constructed legally, uh, it will be allowed to continue in perpetuity. However, if you make substantial changes to that structure, change the land use, uh, then you would be subject to the new zoning bylaw. So if you don't plan on doing anything different with your property over the next little while, you're going to continue to have everything you currently have. So what we're going to talk about, first of all, we're going to make four key things that are changing, and then we're going to get into the good stuff, which is how this will impact war degree, because that's why you all came. So, four things that we're going to note, uh, how the zoning bylaw is changing land use, how we're encouraging mixed use development, how we're encouraging complete neighborhoods, and how we're supporting neighborhood transformation. So, with that, one of the key highlights with this proposed zoning bylaw is we have fewer land use zones. So when we're talking about zones, we're talking about the classification of land that the city applies to a piece of land to establish the regulations and standards for subdivision, development, and land use. That's what we're talking about, zones. So there are residential zones, there are industrial zones, there are mixed use zones. And then there's some that are special, which we'll talk about. The first significant change with this proposed zoning bylaw is that we have consolidated the number of zones and the number of land uses. So as Diana mentioned, uh, the last time the bylaw was comprehensively reviewed was in 1970. Uh, so we have found that some of the land uses in our current zoning bylaw don't quite align with what's happening in 2019. So I think there is a land use definition for silver culture. And I'm not quite sure what that is. It's Forestry. Okay, there we go. That's why we need to update it because it's not a word that some people commonly use. I would have I would have said forestry. That would have made more sense to me. Uh, so that's one thing that you can expect to see in this new zoning bylaw. We've also made the zoning bylaw a little bit more user friendly. So if you've used the zoning bylaw before, you know that you have to kind of flip through a number of chapters. And we try to reduce that by including all of the information you possibly want for your property in that zone in one chapter. So rather than having to flip through eight or 12 chapters, you might only have to go to two. So with regard to consolidating the zones, getting that number of zones down, our current zoning bylaw has 188 land use zones. With the proposed zoning bylaw, we got it down to 43. How we did that was basically analyzing how the zones currently function and how the function aligns with the OCP. 
What we found is that some of the zones uh, were duplicating themselves, some were competing with each other, um, and some were just never being used. Uh, so we really tried to find how we could align with the OCP, support that policy document, uh, but also make it easier for people to use and navigate. So here's just an example of what we're talking about on the consolidation side. So currently with residential zones, we have 12. By again, analyzing how the zones function, how they align with the OCP, we're actually able to accomplish OCP policy with only five residential zones. Uh, so that's, that's a big accomplishment for us because again, we want it to be user friendly. We don't want you to have to have a zoning whisperer uh, to tell you how to navigate it. Uh, you should be able to open the book yourself. It should be written in language that you can understand and can apply to your property. So the next feature of this proposed zoning bylaw is that we are really trying to encourage mixed-use development. And so our, as I mentioned, our guiding document, the official community plan, does encourage the development of more mixed-use uh, opportunities. So whether it's a building, whether it's an entire site, uh, we want to try to encourage that mix between commercial, residential, cultural, institutional. Uh, we want to make sure that you're able to have access to the amenities and services that are important to you in your neighborhood, and that kind of ties into the next significant change, which is with regards to complete neighborhoods. Uh, so when you think of a complete neighborhood, what does that kind of conjure up for you? Well, here's what we, as a city, together when we developed the OCP, the community, decided what a complete neighborhood is. So it's inclusive, it's easy to get around, and we have a mix of housing choice, we have amenities, we have services. So really what we're, we're aiming for is where you live, you can get the things that you need without having to leave your neighborhood. So whether you need a daycare, whether you need your dry cleaning done, whether you need to grab some milk, uh, you should be able to get that within your neighborhood. Uh, we recognize that some areas aren't quite there yet, but that's why we have these regulations coming into effect, because we want to try to encourage that shift. So the fourth change relates to infill development. Uh, so we have has experienced some growth in the city over the last little while, and I know even here in Ward 3, you started to see some new housing forms uh, pop up in, in on lots where there was previously a different house. And, and so we've heard some of the tension that might exist when that happens because the building might not look like the house that was there previously. Uh, and so we've heard that feedback and we've tried to include uh, some re regulations based on the infill guidelines that were developed uh, earlier this year and provided to us going forward. We've tried to include regulations that really try to address some of those concerns. Uh, so, you will see in this proposed bylaw infill regulations with regard to building height. So, trying to make uh, infill development contextually sensitive to the other houses on the street, uh, as well as setback requirements. So, ensuring that new infill development isn't too far or too too far up front or too far back on where the rest of the street line has been developed, as well as limitations on the first floor height. So, you may have noticed. Uh, with some of the newer development along the street. Um, many of the entrances might be at grade, so right off the sidewalk, whereas an infill house, you might have to go up a couple steps, and the door is set up higher than the rest of uh, the, the doors on the block. So we have some regulations that we propose that will help to make that a little bit more sensitive. Get really bossy. <laughs> the boss around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's let's jump into it. What are the notable things that you can expect as residents of Ward 3 in this proposed zoning bylaw? So, um, two unit buildings committed in residential zones. Uh, so currently, most uh, a lot of our residential zones will only allow for the construction of a detached dwelling, and that's it. We allow you to put a secondary suite in that detached dwelling. What we're proposing is to allow for more uh, semi-detached, duplex uh, type of building forms in residential neighborhoods. 
Another thing to note is front yard access and parking. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have heard some concerns from residents about uh, front yard parking, uh, particularly if the street doesn't already have front yard parking and you get that new house that gets built and then their driveway comes right up. Uh, so again, we've heard that feedback and we're trying to include some regulations to ensure that the development is a little bit more sensitive. Uh, so basically, if you have a small lot and you live off of a lane, we, we would not be able to have front yard parking access. We want to encourage the use and activation of the lane uh, and making having people use that uh, as one primary way to do that. As I mentioned, there are regulations to support infill to make sure that it is sensitive to what's happening in the neighborhood. And the key thing to note about that is that we're not trying to make infill look like everything else on the block. So we still want to provide opportunities for different architectural styles uh, and for the neighborhood to, to transform, uh, but we don't necessarily want to have houses that are sticking out like a sore thumb. Uh, so we've tried to create regulations that will help us to kind of find that middle ground. Another change you'll notice is that we're going to allow apartment style buildings in more residential areas that are close to downtown. Uh, so as I mentioned, some of our lower density, density residential zones only allow for detached dwellings. Uh, but in order to help us uh, provide more housing choices for residents, we are going to, we are proposing that apartment style buildings be permitted in more areas. <coughs> uh, secondary suites, again, some, something we've heard feedback from residents is that uh, they would like greater opportunities to develop a secondary suite. Uh, under our current regulations, you're only allowed to do it in a detached dwelling. If you were any, in any other building form, it was prohibited. We lifted some of those restrictions so that you would have an opportunity to build secondary suites in more houses, housing types. Uh, garage with limitation. Uh, so currently, uh, we have no limitations on how, uh, how wide your garage, a front-facing garage can be facing the street. Uh, and the OCP does have a specific policy about how we can enhance the streetscape and how we can cre create a pedestrian friendly neighborhood. And so one of the ways that we're looking and proposing uh, that we can do that is by limiting uh, the size of garages that are facing the street. So just kind of keep that in mind, because I know we'll probably have questions about it. We have a, a lovely board over here about it, so you can kind of see what it would look like on your lot. Uh, Active transportation. So there are two things that the zoning bylaw is uh, trying to support with regards to active transportation. Uh, Long-term bicycle parking being required in multi-unit buildings. Uh, so we want to encourage people to use active modes of transportation. Uh, but what we've heard is that I might ride my bike, but when I get to my destination, there's no place to put it. And I get to my destination in a hot, sweaty mess, and there's nowhere to change. So our proposed zoning bylaw is including some regulations that will support that. So not only providing opportunities for parking, so whether it's bike racks or secured bike cage, uh, but also opportunities in some areas for there to be change facilities for those who do, do bike use at active modes of transportation. Uh, and the final thing to note, uh, we're proposing, again, proposal, if you have a feeling, Give us your feedback, you've got forms, you can do it online. No parking requirements. So we are not, in this zoning bylaw, we are not proposing parking minimums for downtown. So if you were to build a, a development downtown, we would not say you must provide 10 stalls. It would be up to you to decide if you want to pro provide parking stalls at all or if you wanted to provide 50. Uh, the city would not be saying, yes, we must provide parking because again, we want to encourage that shift to active modes of transportation, uh, and this is one potential way for us to do that. So we're going to kind of show you how Ward 3 breaks down with regard to proposed zoning and new zoning. So we have a handout that Kayla's going to mm -hmm. kind of distribute amongst you, and it's, I know it's hard to see on the screen, which is why we're going to give you a paper copy. Uh, but basically, this is what your ward looks like. So the orange is the residential. So as you can see, most of the ward is uh, at some density, whether low, medium, or high.